to a larger diagnosis of MRI, starting in, what, 1981, at your institution. So uh, MRI has is, is certainly revolutionized our ability to, to study the disease and diagnose it. It's part of the McDonald criteria, as we just discussed. I, um, of course, am an advocate of getting an MRI at the time of diagnosis, and I agree with Pat that one has to get the full spinal cord uh, down to the conus. Uh, sometimes we will even look at, at the roots in the lumbosacral to look for other explanations for lower extremity problems. Um, I think that, uh, as Stephen said, that it's a real issue, though, this issue of non-specificity. I'm excited about some of the new techniques, such as central vein sign, which may add uh, a layer of specificity to, to some of these small white spots that we would otherwise, uh, or some people might call demyelinating. Uh, it's, uh, and, and with the, some of the newer techniques, we are seeing truly cortical lesions, although I think one still has to be very careful about um, being confident that those are real and not artifactual. Are you using central vein sign now? We are not allowed to use it on our, on our clinical scan, or apparently it's not an FDA-approved uh, pulse sequence acquisition. So if we happen to get it for a research protocol, we, we look at it, uh, but we're not allowed to have it on our clinical scanner. Could I just say, why haven't we been able to get our act together to standardize how we do MRI scans for MS? Wouldn't that be helpful? We, we haven't even been able to do that. So CMSC, every couple of years, puts out a reasonable recommendation on what's done. But for the most part, we don't own the scanners. Right at academic centers, there's a radiology department who thinks they own them. Dr. Ellen Mowry at our center took the CMSC pulse sequence acquisition and went to RADnet, which is the national network, and asked them if they would consider using this. And they, they've uh, accepted so that they are starting to now use a standardized protocol for MRI. It hasn't gained widespread application, but I, I think it's a start, and I think we need to advocate for that. In general, as the software gets better, we're able to see things on scans that are more detailed than what we could see five or 10 years ago, and, and I do think it's important to make sure that what we're doing in academic settings and in research can be applied broadly. Um, remembering, too, that the McDonald criteria the way that those lesions are looked at was performed on 1.5 Tesla MRI scans. So we can see more than that now, but I think upgrading hardware is difficult to, in the community, difficult across many sites. Upgrading software is easier. So I'm, I'm hopeful that things like Central Vein, which is really a software upgrade that just needs to get approved and rolled out, might be easier for you know, all comers to be able to have performed as opposed to, let's say, a three Tesla or seven Tesla MRI which is going to be incredibly expensive and cumbersome to try to implement you know, broadly. What's the best sequence for central vein? Well, there's sequences to allow for layering of the, a flare and a susceptibility weighted sequence to look and see the area within the lesion that's actually the vein itself. It's a nice example of sort of being able to see something with modern technology that we've known has been true for 100 years, that there are veins within these lesions. It's just they've been basically hiding in plain sight with our standard T2 or T2 flare imaging.